In northeastern Italy, resting at the base of the Dolomite Mountains, lays an airfield that was instrumental in bringing the age of flight to the country. What started as a training ground for pilots eventually turned into a fully functioning base that currently hosts NATO's only fighter wing south of the Alps. April 19, 1911, eight years after the Wright brothers successfully flew an aircraft in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Italy was caught up in the whirlwind of aeronautical technology. To make sure they didn't fall behind, the country opened the doors to its first flight school, Aeroporto Aviano. But the airport's status as a school wouldn't last long. On September 29th, the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Italy entered into the Italo-Turkish War, where Italy hoped to gain land in modern-day Libya. As the war progressed, Italy became involved in several advances in air combat, including the world's first aerial reconnaissance mission and first-ever aerial bomb. Despite Italy's successful campaign, the most iconic battle involving Aviano Italian personnel would come only a few years later during World War I. Two Italian pilots, Captain Maurizio Pagliano and First Lieutenant Luigi Gori, successfully flew an unauthorized air raid against Austria-Hungary naval yards in 1916, making them overnight heroes. A year later, while conducting a mission on December 30, 1917, their bomber was shot down, killing both pilots. In honor of the fallen heroes, the airfield was renamed Aeroporto Pagliano e Gori in 1919. After World War I, the base resumed their training mission, Six hangars were built in the 1930s, splitting the base into two sections, Aviano North, where bombers were located, and Aviano South for fighter planes. Pagliano Igori's training was once again interrupted with the start of World War II. After Italy ousted fascist leader Benito Mussolini, Germany invaded Italy in October 1943. They gained Pagliano Igori on their journey to Rome and began using it for combat missions against the Allies. U.S. Army Air Force fighter jets attacked the base nine times throughout the war. One of these attacks took place on January 31, 1944, when 15 American B-17s and B-24s bombed the airfield. During the attack, two U.S. aircraft were shot down by the Germans' defense. Despite strong resistance, the American attack resulted in substantial damage to the base and Germany's aircraft. Once Germany surrendered in 1945, Britain's Royal Air Force took control of the base for two years before returning it to the Italian Air Force. In the 1950s, Italy claimed several historical milestones that would realign the future of the airfield. In 1949, Italy joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and signed an agreement allowing Americans to use several bases in Italy, including Pagliano e Gori. January 1, 1959, U.S. Air Forces in Europe redesignated the field to Aviano Air Base. Public interest in the base was sparked in the 1950s through the 1980s when the base hosted its first NATO Day. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over Europe flocked to Aviano to watch NATO forces perform air shows. Italy's 3rd Air Brigade of Villafranca and its National Aerobatic Team performed in the skies as U.S. aircraft were displayed on the flight line for spectators. The U.S. Air Force Sky Blazers, also known as the Thunderbirds, would participate in the air show when they were on tour in Europe. In 1980, NATO Day was brought to an end due to the global oil crisis. Despite the shared interoperability of the Americans and the Italians on base, the true test of community and partnership came unexpectedly on May 6, 1976, when a 6.5-scaled earthquake rocked the region, claiming nearly a thousand lives. Though the base was not affected, several towns in the community were damaged or destroyed. In the wake of the destruction, United States airmen from the 40th Tactical Group at Aviano Air Base and the Iowa Air National Guard provided aid to the Italians and their communities. The airmen cleared 15 miles of road, hauled away 19 tons of debris, and set up 159 tents in nine villages. U.S. Vice President Nelson Rockefeller came to Italy to inspect the damage, and the U.S. provided financial aid to the area. The 90s marked the historic arrival of the 31st Fighter Wing, which was previously located at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida. On August 24, 1992, Hurricane Andrew made landfall in southern Florida, damaging all the buildings on Homestead. The decision was made to turn it into an air reserve base. However, Air Force leadership was reluctant to inactivate the 31st Fighter Wing, whose predecessor, the 31st Fighter Group, became an iconic unit during World War II as the highest scoring Army Air Force unit in the Mediterranean. In order to keep the wing active, the decision was made to transfer the 31st Fighter Wing flag to Aviano Air Base on April 1, 1994. On that same day, the 555th Fighter Squadron, known as the Triple Nickel, was activated. 
The second fighter squadron followed shortly after with the activation of the 510th Fighter Squadron, known as the Buzzards, in July of the same year. February 28, 1998. The ongoing conflict between the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and the Kosovo Liberation Army reached the boiling point. Serbian police responded to a Liberation Army attack, and the pursuit that followed resulted in the death of 20 people and the start of a civil war. In response to the social cleansing in Kosovo, Yusevi activated the 31st Air Expeditionary Wing at Aviano Air Base as part of Operation Allied Force in 1999. During the 78-day mission, the unit became the largest expeditionary wing in Air Force history. Airmen at Aviano flew almost 9,000 combat sorties and clocked close to 40,000 hours of combat service over Kosovo, Serbia, and the Balkans. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, Aviano Air Base became the launch point for airborne forces out of Vicenza. The base housed more than 2,300 U.S. Army and Air Force personnel and performed 62 missions, moving more than 2,100 passengers and over 24,000 tons of cargo. Aviano also played a major role in Operation Odyssey Dawn and Operation Unified Protector in 2011. The operation enforced a no-fly zone over Libya to prevent Muammar Gaddafi's supporters from performing air raids on anti-Gaddafi forces and civilians. The base hosted multiple flying units and more than 2,000 personnel. They also clocked over 13,000 flying hours during the mission. Throughout its history, Aeroporto Pagliano Igori has evolved through over 100 years of conflict and changes, from opening as a small aviation school to becoming a strategic NATO base for a U.S. fighter wing. Despite these changes, cooperation between NATO countries, the U.S., and the Italians continues to make this base distinct from all other bases in Europe. For both the Americans and Italians who have served together over the decades, the rich history will forever be honored in the present and years to come.